Hey, it's time for voiceover body shop. Tech talk. Tech talk. Tech talk. Tech, tech talk. talk. Now Jeff says tech talk. Tech talk. Tech talk. We got lots of tech to talk about. Uh, you got a couple of things. I got. I want to talk about sound treatment a little bit. Like Something acoustic treatment. Acoustic treatment. Okay, cool. Yeah. You know, so that that'll be that'll be interesting. We can wax poetically on that for a long time. Right. And if you have a question about home voiceover studios, mm -hmm. you know, you don't get the chance to talk to two experts that actually know more about this than just about everybody else. Because and for free. Yeah, really. <laughs> I mean, you can hire us, but we're giving you the information here that you need. But then again, you got to learn how to do it. And having the equipment isn't necessarily what makes you good. Mm -hmm. you know, so anyway, people are also upgrading equip up upgrading to equipment that they have no business upgrading to because they feel my career requires me to upgrade now. Oh, and then they buy things and they have no idea why week. they bought them. And oh yeah. boy, all righty. So if you got a question about stuff like that or anything else with, regarding voiceover technology, put it in the chat room, whether you're watching on Facebook Live or YouTube Live mm -hmm. or on CBS. You know, they might pick us up if their program really <laughs> sucks. Anyway, voiceover body um, shop tech talk right now. Talk. Brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, the home of Harlan Hogan's signature products. Source Elements, the makers of Source Connect. VoiceOver Heroes, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voice actor website doesn't have to be a pain in the butt. VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for voiceover success. And World Voices, the industry association of freelance voice talent. And now, here's your hosts, Dan and George. Hey there, I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Widom. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or V-O-B-S. Tech, Tech, Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Not Tick Talk. Tech talk. That's right. We may talk about TikTok, but but it, TikTok don't have tech talk. That's right. And the audio on TikTok and tick TikTok is really bad. <laughs> it is. Okay. I'm <laughs> I'm in one of those moods tonight. So <laughs> uh TikTok. Yes. Anyway, um this is a show about home voiceover studios. You want to talk about a niche. It's, you know, in the entire world of subject matter, it's a niche. But when you only have a couple of big fish swimming in this little lake, you're going to get all the right information because you and I have built probably close to a thousand studios or more. Yes. I mean, we've both been doing this for over like 15 years and you, you learn stuff. I mean, we knew what to do when we started and then you go through everybody's place and it's like, well, well, this could be like this. Mm -hmm. That could be like that. I, you know, I was at, I was at a young lady's house this week and she's like, should I be in this closet or that closet? And it's like, well, this one is bigger. This one has more crap in it. <laughs> this one has an air conditioning vent. <laughs> that, yeah. There, there's that, <laughs> but you have to, you don't, you don't know those things until you go in there and hear it, you know, yeah, sniff we, around a bit. Right. I mean, and she was telling me how some panel company, I won't mention who mm -hmm. was came in and they've got all these calculations and they're measuring the whole thing. And I'm like, you don't need all that overthinking stuff. it. And you know what? A lot of times those, those companies, they do all these measurements, right? They'd actually don't know how to properly acoustically <laughs> treat a small booth. And That's you know right. why? Because the math doesn't work. The, the physics models of acoustics mm -hmm. don't apply to small rooms. So they just, even if they do all the measurements, it don't matter. What matters is experience. Exactly. <laughs> Knowing what works. And what you hear. Right. You know, my ears are still pretty sharp. Don't tell my wife, but they're still pretty sharp. <laughs> I can hear things. I'm like, yeah, there's a note over here. Anyway, <laughs> you want our expertise because 
we know what's going on and you can work with either one of us. Sometimes you end up working with both of us. Cause you'll like mm-hmm. ask a question on here or like, well, what do you think that we should do? Uh, I, I don't know if I believe that guy. I'm going to hire that exactly. other guy. Exactly. <laughs> but if you want to work with George, all you got to do is go over to George, the dot tech. We have a shiny new website. Um, and you've, you'll notice there's a tremendous amount of options of services over there. We now have services for every popular DAW. So if you are, if you want somebody that really knows their thing when it comes to a W audition, the people that are available that to hire in our website are specifically experts in a W audition, including Dan. So you'll be able to hire those folks directly through our site and get the help you need on the schedule that works for you at okay. George the dot tech. And Dan has his world happening over at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Mm-hmm. I know you would have killed to have that one, but what are you going to do? I, I've had too many brands already in the last <laughs> 15 years. Well, at least I stay consistent. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you go over to homevoiceoverstudio.com, one of the first things you will see, and I'm, I've been thinking about it, is my specimen collection cup. Mm-hmm. And I wonder if people see the humor in it or they're like, well, that's so. disgusting. I hope they get the humor in it. I, well, that's... <laughs> anyway, you, <laughs> you click on the specimen collection cup. And it opens up a Dropbox where you can place an MP3 of your audio. You follow my instructions because I'm looking for very specific things. I, mm-hmm. I need to hear the background noise. I need to hear you talking on your microphone. And then I need to hear more of your background noise so I can compare all these things. Yep. And you need both, folks. Don't send in just room tone. Right. We need to hear voice. We need to hear signal and the noise. Exactly. Hear both. And you'd be amazed at what we can find from there. There yeah. are things that are I'm finding are consistent in a lot of people's audio, but a you lot can of, tell the size of the room they're in. Oh, oh, time, easily, easily, yeah. Within a, probably a small or margin of right. error, if it's badly treated, yeah, which we will mm-hmm. talk about in a little bit, right? Uh, but yeah, it's um, there are a lot of techniques for getting a room to sound the way it's supposed to. Mm-hmm. Um, but you have to go into each individual one because yeah. every voice is different. Every room is different and everyone has to be, it, when we say it has to be custom built, it doesn't mean that you've got to bring in a crew and it's no. like, okay, we're going to measure this and do all that. No, it's more a matter of trying to keep it as simple as possible. So you're not spending a fortune on stuff, especially yeah. if. After a while, you're like, eh, voiceover is not for me. You're not investing in a tremendous amount in it. If you start making money, then you can upgrade things a little bit. But we'll right. also talk about that a little bit. Right. Speaking about talking about a little bit of things, <laughs> what's in your tech update this week? <laughs> well, I mean, in absolutely zero particular order. Uh, starting off, I think it was I think it was Jason Lanier White who was yeah. on the show about yeah. a month ago. Yeah. Mentioned bone conduction headphones. So. I've started looking into it. I haven't bought any yet, um, but they the brand the brand apparent the brand that's kind of like the one that is the kind of the in- innovator in this space is called Shocks. Used mm-hmm. to be called Aftershocks, and you can buy their Open Run, mm-hmm. for example, for well, roughly one hundred and thirty dollars, right? Yeah, yeah. But of course, like many different technologies, especially Bluetooth, there are plenty of knockoffs. And so you might want to consider looking at some of the lesser, less expensive ones that are like on things like Amazon, if you're on a budget and you don't want to inv- overinvest in something that you're kind of dubious as to how useful it is. So why would you want these things? The idea is kind of the best of both worlds. It's the pros of wearing headphones, meaning you can hear communication. So if mm-hmm. you're on a phone patch, you're being directed, you're on Zoom, Source Connect, whatever, you can hear them speaking to you. So, and, and you're, you've got it, it goes with you. You can physically move around because it's Bluetooth. Yeah. I know people who ski with these things. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. It also has the added benefit of not plugging your ears. So <laughs> it's not. Yeah. Hear anything going around, around you. Right. And it's not, so it's not really like wearing headphones because what you don't listen to on these bone conduction headphones is yourself. Uh-huh. The whole point is to only use these to hear what's playing back and so that's really nice because now when you're performing you don't have that feedback loop into your headphones Mm -hmm. you don't have your um, ear canals being plugged with in-ear monitors or some kind of thing which changes the way you hear yourself 
right? So your ears can hear, you can hear your voice in the natural way your voice sounds. Which is the way it should be. Right? right yeah. And and so you have this way of monitoring only things that you really need to hear, which would be like, let's say you're doing punch and roll of an audio book. You can hear the pre-roll, right? Um, you're being directed. You can hear the director, right? But you don't hear anything else you don't need to hear, including yourself. And I think that's a really interesting thing to, to consider. And I would be loving, I would love to hear in the comments on Facebook or YouTube, who has tried these right. and found these to be really useful? It'd be no feedback either. So no you'd, feedback. You'd be in front of a mic and it wouldn't it wouldn't feedback. That's right. So so I, I'm curious to see if you've tried them before. What was your experience? Let us know down below in the comments because I I would love to hear uh, how people have used them and if if I'm getting a lot of good feedback about them, I'll start recommending them to our clients. Excellent. Right. So that's that's kind of a different direction to go with headphones. <coughs> Coming up, also mic cables. We all deal with mic cables. This studio, we've got a lot of cables because we have a lot of microphones. A lot of leftover cables. Too. And a lot of leftover <laughs> cables. And what we find is that the cables that we have the most trouble with, Dan, where's the one that we just unplugged? It's here. Oh, here it is. They tend to have a connector that looks like this. Can we try this camera? Maybe this will give us a better, a better view of it, Sue. They tend to have this kind of a connector. Now, this is an old-fashioned design connector from... The original was made by, I think, Switchcraft. Mm -hmm. Does that sound right? Yep. And the problem with these is a lot of them, the wiring inside is terminated with little screws instead of actually being soldered in place. That's one problem, which guarantee is going to cause loose connections. <clears throat> the other thing I've noticed with these is, I don't know if it's a shielding issue, but these tend to allow more RFI and noise to get mm -hmm. in. Versus the Neutrik style connectors. Now the Neutrik ones, there's one on, on Dan's mic right here. There's one on my mic. Actually, actually I have a good look at it right here. This is this is a Neutrik style. This is actually a Neutrik brand connector, and they just seem to have a better uh, a better better termination with the cable. <coughs> Pardon me. Better termination, better solder joints, and they seem to be they seem to hold up to a lot more. Abuse. Yeah. Well, Soldering these things is a nightmare. Yeah. These, I don't know what it is about these types of, types of connectors, but the ones that have give us the most trouble overall look kind of like this. So when you're looking at my cables, gravitate to the ones that have the connectors that look like this, the Neutrik style. They tend to just be a lot more robust and more reliable. And I think the connector is probably the most important thing of all on a mic cable. Yeah. Here's another thing <clears throat> there seems to be a gap between the outside and the inside wiring oh you can almost feel it twisting yeah, around inside it. oh yeah you're right you're right and that could be you know what it is is in this case probably it's a thin outer rubber coating mm -hmm. with a big airspace inside where the wiring inside floats around right so that's probably what's going on. i don't know if that's why it <coughs> was giving us trouble but when you squeeze one of these high quality whirlwind this is a whirlwind mm -hmm. You can feel it has a lot of, it's substantial. You're not squeezing the thing. Right. It's got a very heavy coating and it's got a very good shielding. And the shielding is that metal foil that's on the outside. That's what keeps the RF from getting into your Yeah, house. so oh. important. So when you're looking at cables, it's not really how expensive it is. It's the quality of the connectors and it's the quality of the shielding. Um, and so, yeah, you can spend 60 to $80 for one mic cable if you get like a Megami Gold. But if you start Googling and look for the words like, Neutrik, uh, Belden, or Mogami, and look for other mic cables, you'll find some out there that are about half that price that still have those important features. Right. So, got to stop buying these at all electronics around the corner. Yeah, yeah. Some, of them, some of them come from China. <laughs> They're just designed to be cheap, and they forget some of the important details that make a cable reliable. <clears throat> Next up, going into the software side of things, um, I've recently started playing around with Waves plugin called Studio Rack. Okay. And what's cool about it are it has multiple layers of coolness. But one of the main things that I love about Studio Rack is it is free, first of all. <laughs> it's absolutely a free plugin. I have it installed here on Twisted Wave, so I can throw a screenshot so you guys can see what it looks like. So it runs on Twisted Wave. It really runs on absolutely any DAW. Let's go to Window and Twisted Wave. And now, now you should see my whole Twisted Wave window, as well as the Studio Rack plugin. The cool thing about Studio Rack is it allows you to make a chain of plugins that you want in their plugin, 
and they they don't have to be Waves plugins. So what you see right here on this screen, every plugin you see in this window, with the exception of Ozone, that's a not a free one, but a cheap one. Every plugin in here is a free plugin. TDR Nova, Denoiser um, from Bertom Denoiser, Loud Max, which we're all quite familiar with for setting your output level, your your makeup gain. And then one I threw on the end called DP Meter. So hmm. It's a little bit like the waves meter, but you know, it's it's a free meter. And so I was able to put together a completely free chain of plugins that you can now install in another DAW. I could take this same rack and then install it on Adobe Audition or Audacity, and I will get back exactly the same settings, everything, and it's portable from system to system. <clears throat> the next part that's cool about it is this macro area, these macro knobs. I can set up knobs that do specific jobs. So for example, you don't have to understand that a low cut filter is go to TR TDR Nova. <coughs> Pardon me. A lot of dust in the air. I don't know screen. what it is. Um, I don't have to know to go into this kind of complicated looking plugin to go find the HP or high pass filter plugin <coughs> and okay. learn how to, <laughs> excuse me, and learn how to dial this thing in because if somebody like George set it up for you, um, now you can turn the low cut filter knob that's been predetermined to adjust exactly that tool. And now you'll be able to adjust the TDR Nova high pass filter without having to understand how the TDR Nova high pass filter works. You don't have to open this, go over here and turn this knob. I don't have enough room. Maybe I can make these work. But what happens? Oh, look at that. When I turn the low cut filter knob, I'm actually adjusting the high put high pass filter cutoff, and right? Going from like 80 hertz to 100 hertz to 120. And, and this is all real time. It if if nice. you're playing back your track, right. you will hear the effect in real time as you adjust it. And as you can see, looking at all these knobs, I have one for reduced noise. Now, this is tied to the denoiser plugin, right? And it's adjusting the threshold. I have one for warm, which adds sort of a low frequency warmth, right? I have a bright, which adds some top end, et cetera, et cetera, right? All these knobs, and they're predetermined to do certain features. So you don't have to understand the minutia. You don't have to be afraid to actually adjust your settings. But you got to know what to listen for. That's right. And that's mm -hmm. the beauty of this. Instead of having potentially 77 parameters <laughs> to play with, you can have six or eight, and now there's far, far less controls. Do, do, you, do you ever go into a car museum and you see a Model T? Many <clears> times. And you look at it and go, wow, there's two different little levers on the steering wheel. Right. And then there's another dial on the dashboard. And you look at the floor and there's like, how many foot pedals are there? These things were really complicated to drive back then because they didn't know how to automate a lot of things like choke and everything else. Mm -hmm. As cars got more modern, choke became mm -hmm. automatic. There's mm -hmm. a lot of things in a modern car. Now, electric cars are the logical conclusion. You know, you just press, it's like a golf cart. You press the, the pedal mm -hmm. and it starts to go, right? This is where we're trying to go. This is where I'm trying to go with this processing, right? Where it's not a Model T anymore. You don't have to understand how to adjust the timing, the spark all this other stuff, you can just get in and drive. That's the idea. And that's what's so cool about Studio Rack. So I'm looking forward to making more use of that and showing more folks how to use it. And I've cool. set up a Studio Rack service on the website where you can actually get that set up for you. Very, very last thing I'll jump into real quick, jump in and out. Do you know Twisted Wave has a video editing function? I've heard that. And I use Twisted Wave. I just haven't had the occasion to use it yet. Well, I'll tell you, the video editing function is nice because if you're doing self-tapes and you want to edit something up really quickly, mm -hmm. it's a very quick way to just chop up something and take out the dead space, right? It's mm -hmm. beautiful for that. But what I found the other hidden benefit of the Twisted Wave video editing isn't the video editing at all. It's the audio processing. So <clears throat> you've recorded something on your iPhone or your camera, and there's rumbling background noise because the air conditioning, the heater was on. Right. There's, you know, it sounds a little bit thin or whatever it is, it's hard to use the processing tools in, in uh, let's say, for example, iMovie. They're not that great. They're not very intuitive, blah, blah, blah. Now you can drag that video clip into Twisted Wave and use the processing in Twisted Wave, which uh, I think is more intuitive, Yeah, especially if you have a stack made for you 
for your video editing. And now you just drag your video in, apply a processing stack appropriate for the, for the video production, and then save the video again. And you don't have to know, oh, wait a minute, now that I'm saving the video again, what resolution am I supposed to save it at? It allows you to what do that. bit rate am I supposed to do? You don't have to think about it. It's just going to imp it's just going to use the same settings that the original video had. Wow! So it takes away a ton of that annoying video stuff. You know, there's too many settings in video software because you have to worry about the video and the audio. Twisted Wave just, I think, just makes it so elegant and easy to get a file in, do a little audio cleanup, get it back out again, and not worry about loss of video quality you know, bit rate settings and all this other stuff. Right. So I thought that was a really, I just, That's I've been playing cool. with it more and I found it to be a really useful sort of side effect right. of having a audio slash video editor like Twisted Right. Wave. If you do a lot of video editing, it, you know, if you're doing a lot of video because everybody's doing video these days, yeah, it's probably a very valuable tool. I mean, I love Twisted Wave because it's just so simple. It's, it's, it's it yeah. is the simple audio editing Twisted Wave equivalent for video. Right. I don't know of anything that's more efficient and easy to operate everything else is um considerably more complicated yeah. and people are very thankful when we recommend <clears> it i wish we had a nickel for every time we've sold a copy of that well <laughs> we just we, we we get it back because we give up the right advice for the right tools and it comes back around exactly. and we get to thank thomas the developer of twisted wave he is the man thank you thomas you're you're awesome yeah that's a that's a, that's a great program i yeah. actually used it this way i mean i usually use adobe audition yeah for everything but if it's a long format thing let it roll. It's not going to, I mean, not, not that anything is going to make my computer sweat. We've got those Mac minis with the M1 chips. Yeah, the M1 chips are you know, smoking fast. Too. But I, but I've gotten used to using <clears throat> used to wave and you know, just, you could take a file and just throw it in something else. Yeah. That's the other thing. It's a lot of people are like, well, oh, how, I, I want to use this program, but I got to do it through this to yeah. do that. And I'm like, you take the file. And you put it in the other one. Yeah, Twisted Wave is not good for overthinkers. Right. Like if if you're like, <laughs> I want to know every single parameter. I need to. I need under. No, it's good for very efficient workflow. Yeah. It's like it's it's a switchblade. Yeah. You know, it's not a Swiss Army knife, so yeah. to speak. So that's what I love about. It. Anyway, sound treatment, acoustics. Yeah, I've, well, what I've have had, you been dealing with lately? Well, I've I've had a. It's been a week of <clears throat> people, as you just mentioned, who overthink things. Mm -hmm. There's everybody's they, they read too much they ask a lot of, i mean it's important to ask questions sure but they ask questions of people who don't give them the right answers yeah yeah you know yeah. don't ask on facebook somebody told me that <clears throat> dot 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 i heard that dot 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 right hey, yeah. oh I, I get that four or five times a day yeah <clears throat> one of the things that i keep hearing you know and hearing badly uh <laughs> people not understanding the physical difference between soundproofing and sound treatment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it's like, you know, should I put more Oralex to keep, to isolate myself more? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, they are two very different physical things. Right. You have, when it comes to the acoustics of your room, which George and I agree is by far the most important thing that happens with your, your audio. Cause if it's, clean on the outside when you're doing it it saves you so much trouble on the back end because you don't really have to do a whole lot to it if you if you record it right yeah isolation requires a number of things <laughs> mass thickness uh being far away from noise you know like if you're if you live under a you know the runway of an airport not a great place it's to be doing be voiceover tough. it's yeah. going to be expensive right let's put that way it, well, I know it can be it done. It can be if you want to spend the money. That's right. You know, and as I always like to say, you live where you choose to live. Yeah. And if you want to do voiceover, you better choose a good place. You know, out in the woods is a good place. <laughs> out in the cow pasture is a good place. <laughs> you know, just the occasional moo every now and again. <laughs> but you know, it, soundproofing is a is not easy, and it is by far the most expensive part of having a home voiceover studio. Yeah. So one of the things we recommend is, well, one, find a good closet that has doesn't have an exterior wall. Right. Doesn't have a window. You got to deal with a closet that has a window. You got to do a window plug in there. Yeah. I mean, it's like right on Third Avenue. It's like traffic Brutal. going both ways. And you know, it's tough too in apartments. A lot of times, those closets share a wall with the corridor. Right. You exactly. Know? And you yeah. Know, clunk, clunk, clunk. And yeah. You know, or somebody else flushing a toilet or something like right. that. Right. 
So <clears throat> you, you have a couple of choices when it comes to soundproofing. One, you can spend a crap load of money on something, something good, like a studio bricks yeah. or, you know, whisper room or mm-hmm. you know, vocal Vo- booth. Vo- yeah. I mean, there's a lot of companies that, and there's obviously more now. I think people need to understand this simple concept about booths. Mm-hmm. They were never designed to do voiceover. They were designed to prevent, and somebody actually called me about this this week. I, yeah, I'm going to be doing voiceover, but I have to, I have to practice my, my saxophone. So, um, mm-hmm. that I don't want to bother my roommates. Mm-hmm. Well, you need something like that to do that. Well, that's something the thing is gonna... most of those ISO booths, I think you were getting to are better at keeping the sound in the booth as opposed to than they are keeping, keeping sound from, from getting into the booth exactly. from the outside. And that's right. That studio bricks is one of the few companies that give you test data mm-hmm. showing both, both uh, types of isolation, right? Both sound originating outside and getting in and sound originating inside and getting out. And you'll notice that the booth has pretty different levels of performance right. for yep. those two things. And the guy that started studio bricks <clears throat> started it because He's a saxophone yeah, player. He's to play saxophone. <laughs> so it, it makes Piano. total sense. Yep. So you either invest in a booth or you find the right closet mm-hmm. and then you talk to you or I and we're like, okay, here's how you isolate yourself better. One of the things that, one of the sounds that comes in more than anything else, aside from air conditioning and furnaces, is refrigerators. Oof. It's like, mm. why I, you can look at it on a waveform. You can look at it as a spectrogram. It is a, a steady mechanical noise. Mm-hmm you know, below 180 Hertz or thereabouts. And how do you deal with it? Well, mm-hmm. you can filter it out because it usually your voice doesn't even cover I think it's one of the more kind of easier yeah. type of things yeah. to filter yeah. out. But I've learned to recognize it. Yeah. You hear it. I'm like, well, <clears throat> of course you don't even hear it, but it shows up on the meter because it's actually pretty loud. You know, if you have, you know, elephant hearing, I suppose. <laughs> um, but isolation is important soundproofing is preventing sound from coming into where your microphone is. Right. All right. Right. The other part of this is sound treatment. Right. And that requires a lot of different things Mm -hmm. because you can use materials that you have sitting around the house to do it. A duvet cover. true. Duvet cover. Killer. Just fabulous. I I call it practical acoustic treatment. Exactly. (laughs) Use what you have. Right. Because no one needs to see how the sausage is made. If it sounds good, it is good. That's right. So that's the important thing. There are there are products. You know, we've got um, uh, Audio Mute and uh, you know, Vocal Booth to Go makes makes the, the producer's choice, mm-hmm. and those work really really well. But mm-hmm. they're not really that cheap. Right. So if you're just starting out, use what you got. You know, to put it on the walls. Old duvets from Goodwill. Yeah, exactly. Or even old <laughs> curtains work really old well. Old draperies. Old drapes. Yeah. Heavy stuff. But the thing is. The you, heavier the better. You got to drape it. <clears throat> because not only does oh, yeah, it, it has to have pleating. That's right. So it, yeah. it, it will diffuse the sound. Right. So it bounces and then it gets absorbed. Yeah. But there's a difference between soundproofing and sound treatment mm-hmm. and the next person says i'm going to get some foam soundproof to soundproof foam. my studio soundproofoam.com uh, it's yeah it's it's not <laughs> it's not gonna help yeah but that one's been driving me nuts lately yeah well no okay it's been driving me nuts for about 15 years <laughs> yeah since ever since we've learned the difference ourselves right exactly <laughs> it's been driving us nuts right yeah anyway so that's that's my little rant for this week so right. learn that get it in your Learned heads it. there's a difference between soundproofing and sound treatment Thank you, Dan. You're welcome. All right. We got more to come. Uh, Do we got any questions there, Jeff? Oh, we've got them piling up. All right. We're going to get to those right after these very important messages. So do not go away from voiceover body shop tech talk. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez. And you're enjoying Dan and George on the voiceover body shop. Have you noticed the increasing demands of clients regarding our home studios? Are they at a professional level to record VO for broadcast? I've seen several now demanding cardioid condenser microphones along with AD converters at 24-bit 441K. Now that eliminates the majority of USB microphones. The VO1A and the MicPort Pro solve that problem. You know how I'm always saying that all the equipment we use is designed for making music? The VO1A Harlan Hogan Signature Series Studio Condenser Mic is tailored to the unique needs of voiceover recording. 
And the MicPort Pro 3 from Centrance has been the industry standard audio interface for over a decade, at home and on the road. The new MicPort Pro 3 brings incredible features like the new mic preamp with 65 dB of crystal clear gain, USB-C jacks with adapter for compatibility with standard USB ports, and a stunning headphone amplifier with a super convenient gain switch. You can get them both at voiceoveressentials.com, where you'll see all their great products made just for us VO people. All right. Well, let's talk about one of our other wonderful sponsors, Source Elements, the creators of Source Connect and Source Nexus and a whole cadre of other tools. Well, the thing about these tools is they're all about facilitating a session in the most efficient possible way. At a certain point in your voiceover career, you start realizing that your job is to make the job of everybody else on the production go smoothly and easily. There's a lot of people out there with talent, right? But at the end of the day, if you're the one that brings the talent and is easy to work with, understands your own tools, and gets consistent performances every time, not just performance acting wise, but technical performance every time, you're going to be, they're going to want to keep hiring you. <laughs> I mean, that's the bottom line. They want someone that fits into their, their workflow. You might say you're a cog in a giant machine. Doesn't sound very glamorous, but it's true. And the best voice actors know that that's true. And they're the ones that are going to keep getting hired. So if you want to be that really smooth running cog that really fits into workflows, you probably want to have Source Connect. So go over to source-elements.com and you can just kind of kick the tires over there. Get, get your account set up. You can get a trial license and see how it works. And if you want help, they have tremendous amounts of training and resources. I am also available over at georgethe.tech to help you with our tech team over there as well. So there's lots of resources. Anyway, thank you, Source Elements. Let's get on with the rest of the show. There's too many questions. Let's get to it. <laughs> hey there, I'm David H. Lawrence, the 17th. And with my company, VO Heroes, and my team of coaches and my community of voiceover talent, we guide voiceover actors along their journey. And you may be watching VOBS here uh, and not nearly as far along as many of the other people who are watching. You may not even have started yet. And we actually specialize in helping you do just that. So if you're watching all the stuff going on here on VOBS and going, I have no idea what they're talking about. I don't know, but I really want to do this. I'd really like to help you. Please go to VOHeroes.com slash start. That's VOHeroes.com slash start. And you can take our Getting Started in VoiceOver class, which tells you everything you need to get started as a voice talent. And I'd love to hold your hand along the way and help you with that journey. Again, voheroes.com slash start. That's voheroes.com slash start. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying VoiceOver Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV. And we're back here on Voice Over Body Shop Tech Talk, and we got questions from our amazing worldwide audience. You guys tune in. You know you can ask the questions here, and we appreciate it. And Jeff Holman is over here typing them down just as fast as you are typing them in. It's <laughs> pretty amazing. Anyway. This one came from email, right? The it, first one? Absolutely. From Daniel Britt. All right. This is a fascinating question. <clears throat> why, don't you, why don't you read it? So, All righty. I've stopped coughing now. I can okay. read it. Good. Um, I have a whisper room uh, booth in the basement of my house. I've taken care to use double sheetrock on the ceiling above my whisper room and plan to add mass loaded vinyl to that construction as well to help mitigate footfall noise. Footfall noise? Foot, footfall. Oh, footfall, footfall noise. Yes, footfall noise. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. But <laughs> an idea hit me. <laughs> Would there be any benefit to surrounding my whisper room with MLV instead? If I don't necessarily need the whole basement to be sound treated, can I essentially place the MLV either inside or outside the walls of the whisper room and achieve some of the same benefit and ultimately take it with me if I move rather than installing it permanently in the ceiling above me? Wow. You're okay. going to need a crane to get it out there. That MLV is MLV's heavy. So very heavy stuff. Typically, it's one pound per square foot. Oh, jeez. 
right? It's pretty heavy stuff. It's close to as heavy as like a sheet of drywall. So MLV, there's a lot of misconceptions about what MLV is good at and what it's not, right? Or mostly what they think it's good at. What, here's where you don't want to use MLV. This is where it's a big waste of money. Putting it flat up against a sheet of drywall mm -hmm. or putting it between two pieces of drywall, just making ah. a sandwich. Right. This is not a good use of MLV. If you're going to spend that kind of money, you're not getting the maximum benefit. If you're going to just sandwich it, I hit this mic again. This is why we put mics up here, <laughs> yeah, folks. That's right. Only for on camera do I do this. See, you know, I don't have um, one. <laughs> um, the whole point of MLV is that it, it's allowed to be left limp. It's limp. limp. So mass loaded vinyl is flimsy. It's flexible. And it does its job when it's allowed to be limp. So if you have it flat against something, just glued to a wall or just stuck to something else, you might as well just have another layer of sheetrock. It at the cost of sheetrock, way cheaper than the same amount of mass loaded vinyl. Easier to work with. It's easier to work <laughs> with. Yeah, absolutely. And you're gonna get the benefit. The only way you're gonna get benefit truly the maximum benefit of MLV is to mount it to studs like in a, in a, in a wall cavity where there's a space between the stud and the drywall where that material is allowed to sort of essentially limply hang there, limp mass. Um, and then you want to airtight seal the perimeter all the way around it. That's when you get the full maximum effect out of MLV. Um, only when you use it in this way. And I've only learned this in the last four or five years, getting to talk to some really and much more experienced acousticians than I have. I've learned that this is really where MLV shines. This is what it's really made to do. Will you get benefit sticking on the wall of your booth? Yeah, maybe. You're cutting height, but it's expensive bit. for doing that. Oh, it's a lot of money for what it is. You might as well just literally sheet the outside of your whisper room with another layer of drywall and just, just to give you more mass. I mean, but footfall noise is by far the most difficult thing to eliminate. Really, it really is. We have gone to great lengths to eliminate footfall, people walking around upstairs from going into a wall, coming out through the ceiling, coming into your whisper room or any kind of booth for that matter, it is by far the most complex and challenging thing to eliminate completely. I know how to do it because I've worked with the best guys in the business when it comes to figuring out isolation for vibration and other things. And I, we have systems. There's, it's sort of the turducken approach <laughs> or the belt and suspenders. You've got multiple layers of things that are all working together, but one thing like mass loader vinyl on its own whether you attach it to the wall above, the inside of your booth, or the outside, is going to give you very, very little improvement. Right. Not yeah. enough to justify the cost. Yeah. Like an onion or a Russian doll, essentially. Yeah, well, there you go. I like the Russian doll one. Yeah, yeah absolutely. All so right. So thanks for the question, uh, Daniel. Yeah, don't really, overthink that one. Yeah, if, and, if, and if you're realizing that the cost is not making sense, or if you want to find out how to make use of the stuff because you, you already bought it, <laughs> then reach out to me. I'll... I'll help you come up with a plan. All right. All right. Next up. Jeff Holman has a product question. Our very own. Should I swing the mic around to Jeff? Let's sure. Go. All right. Go, Jeff. What do you think of the Apple Watch? And what do you think about the Ultra versus the regular? All right. Well, my wife and I got our, got our Apple Watches for our anniversary a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. I used it for a while, <clears throat> and it started to bother me. Because it sometimes it would you could answer the phone with it. Sometimes you couldn't. Mm. Sometimes suddenly you hear someone talking to you over it. <laughs> uh, sometimes there was all sorts of weird stuff. And I'm like, there's a clock on the wall. I have my iPhone. Why do I need it to be connected to this thing? Yeah. There were things I did like about it. How about the EKG functionality? Did yours have that? It did. Yeah. But I... You know, I figure if I'm still breathing, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> so, I, I you know, yeah. I, I'm, 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 I wasn't really sold on it. It, mm -hmm. it was neat. It was like, oh, I don't have to answer the phone. I just go, you know, Dick Tracy calling Joe Jitsu or whatever. It was fun, but it was more of an annoyance to me than anything else. But I think to some people who are who can multitask like that mm. and 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 understand how to use wearable technology like yeah that. and that was probably one of the first real pieces of wearable technology the really good one yeah really good quality uh, yeah. One, yeah. i mean it works but 
programming it and you know just putting the mickey mouse face on it was tough mm -hmm. you know and then suddenly you do an update like where's mickey mouse where did, where'd he go <laughs> yeah i i mean it's a good question jeff i mean neither of us are wearing one right now. i i don't have one i and believe me <laughs> trust me i've thought about it many times especially when the ultimate came out the thing that the the ultimate at eight hundred dollars, the thing that was missing was the feature that I wanted it to have that the phones now have, which is this GPS two way communication mm. for someone that goes out mountain biking and is off the L, I'm completely off the five G LTE network a lot. San Gabriel Mountains, all that stuff's off the grid. Like you are offline all the time, and it's it's stressful for your your lovely partner at home. Is wondering when the heck you're coming home. Where are you? Are you alive? Handle, handlebars, right? You know. And so, so the iPhone 14 has that feature, but the Ultra Watch doesn't. Now, if the Ultra Watch had it, and I bet the next one probably will, mm -hmm. that's a lot more compelling because it's built into the watch. It's all new all the time, and that feature I think would be kind of worthwhile. But that's the problem. The problem is, and I love tech, but I think I would be futzing with that thing constantly that's i think what I, I would that's be what i didn't like fiddling with it yeah. wanting to look at it it's bad enough that the phone is this constant addiction to hold it i think i would just be using it constantly um the one thing that i that that would use i might buy like a cheap used one just for this one thing and that is it can be a second screen for your camera on your phone so if you're doing self tapes with an iphone right and you want to shoot with the good camera the one on this side, ah, yeah. it's a big pain in the ass because you don't know if you're in frame, you can't hit record, etc. Mm -hmm. But with the watch, you can preview the, the camera on the watch uh, and hit record on the watch. That is like, to me, the killer. That's the killer app. That's the one thing that would, cons I would, <laughs> maybe I'll get like the Apple Watch 3 on eBay, you know, <laughs> just to have that feature. But I don't think I would wear it all the time. I wear a Garmin watch when I go mountain biking. It's cheaper. It's lighter. The battery lasts for a week. I don't have to think about it. It tracks my ride. It does what it needs to do. It has heart rate tracking and stuff. Yeah. So it's, I don't know. I'm so tempted, but it's, it's gadget. Yeah. yeah. Too much gadget. gadget Get a Fitbit. Stuff. Well, yeah, again, my Garmin was like $90 and it does just enough stuff. Yeah. It'll, it'll show me notifications. I can read a text on it. I can't reply, but I can see if it is important. And it's nice if your phone's in your pocket or not on you to have something occasionally that gives you a text message. How many times do you miss texts? Oh, I didn't see that until later, you know, but yeah. it, that is handy. And it's just distracting enough, not to the point of being constant annoyance. So, ah, I don't know. There you go. It's not an easy answer, yeah. but I hope that was helpful. Very helpful. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Grace Newton asks, for the guys on Tech Talk, that would be... You and me. Oh, us. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, where are the, or what are the pros and cons of the new road NT one fifth generation, especially for one who likes to record well up front and do less editing in post? Well, gee, that sounds like just about everybody. Sure. Um, now the generation five, that's the combination XLR and, and USB. USB. That's right. Yeah. Now, the NT1. Now that's a that's a mic that I recommend all the time. It's a it is a I would call it a gold standard at this point. Right. At the budget level. Right. Absolutely. Right. And the fact is, is it's great price. Uh this particular model is very versatile because you can use it as you it's got its own interface in it. Right. But you can also hook it up to XLR and it becomes just a regular good old road NT1. Right. The NT1 is great one because it's very quiet. It's a it has very low noise. Very low self noise. Yeah. They claim it to be the lowest in the business. It's it's right in there with a couple others, yeah. so it's yeah. hard to say it's the quietest, but it is it is really quiet. Yeah. Yeah. And and it comes down to that equation that you and I always talk about. For every $1000 you go up in price on a microphone, you maybe get 1% increase in actual <laughs> vocal quality, you know. Yeah. It's it and it, and sometimes it's worse. Yeah, because exactly. the mic has too much it color picks up or, everything or and, too sensitive or yeah. too much character or whatever, you know. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, the and the and the real bottom line with a microphone. Mm -hmm. And this is one that, you know, people have yelled at me about it and said that you're <laughs> absolutely wrong. I'm like, "Oh man, there is no microphone out there that is going to change the way you read copy." <laughs> It's unless, not it's a, unless it's a mic that literally is in your freaking way. 
That's right. So, <laughs> you know, I've seen people with like Yeti and a giant chaotic eyeball and they're like, <laughs> they're, they're like craning their neck or they have <laughs> contort to try to read their script or they have a big round pop screen. They, their script, they're trying to read. I'm like, that's when, it, <laughs> that's when it can help you read copy. Exactly. You know, <laughs> yeah. and, and as you can hear, you don't need a pop screen if you right. use your mic properly. Right. As we have it set up here. Right. Well, the Rode NT1 is interesting. I'm, I've seen videos. I've seen the tests. I know it sounds good. It's it's they they know how to make a USB mic because they've made the NT USB for a while. I have the US, NT USB Plus. So they just probably took the same technology and shoved it in the tube. I think so. I mean, and what's interesting is you, there's a trade off between the NT USB Plus and the NT1 fifth. Fifth gen. Fifth gen, fifth gen yeah. The big trade off is that there's no zero latency monitor, headphone level mixer, headphone jack, right? So, again, if you need that feature, you don't get it, right? A lot of us know that you don't need headphones while you're at voice acting. So, for then, you won't need it. And the whole idea of this listen, listen the 32 bit <laughs> float technology yeah. is getting a huge amount of, hey, let me in, let me explain to you what it really does, right? At the end of the day, it's not a game changer. It's just another technology that you're going to be mystified about. Right. Just set the recording levels with peaks between minus 12 and minus 6 and move on with your life. <laughs> if the script says, oh, we want peaks somewhere around minus 18, don't even freaking worry about it. Just read it. <laughs> just record. <laughs> don't worry about, just make sure you're getting nowhere near clipping. Right. You're going to be fine. And this microphone's USB interface is going to make that easy for you. If you want to buy this mic as a spare or a travel mic, so you don't have to have an interface with you, great. Right. It it's it's a really good, awesome mic. It's the same price within a few bucks of the prior generation, and you get USB for free. So it seems like a no brainer. I, I don't know. I want to try it. See how see how. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't like buy it if I already have an NT1 and an interface. Right. I wouldn't need that, right? Yeah, I already have that. But if you have, if you want that backup capability or that all-in-one capability, then it's then it's cool. So All right. anyway, good. It's a good product. Yeah. It's proven proven technology. Yes, Tony DeSandro, you get this one. All right. I'm a newbie to VO. Welcome. Well, great, great to have. You. I'm glad you're here. Um, and have been trained on Audacity. Good. Um, sounds like you prefer Adobe Audition. Um, appreciate your thoughts on Adobe Audition versus audacity i'll go and then dan goes mm -hmm. uh because we both have opinions um well audacity is perfectly fine except um the problem with audacity is it's free software maintained by a bunch of volunteers you don't have tech support directly for audacity because there's nobody nobody directly to call on to get help um because it's free software all the third-party plug-in companies like Waves and others don't take it seriously. They don't usually test it. So um, when Audacity does updates, sometimes they're a little bit irrational. <laughs> they add a feature that makes no sense or it's not well thought out or they remove a feature or they kind of do things that don't really make a lot of sense. And that's to the problem with Audacity. As good as it is and as good as it's getting all the time, it's still this little bit of unpredictableness to it. I get that a lot. I just upgraded Audacity, and now this doesn't work. And that's what really bugs me. And this is why I know Dan loves Adobe Audition, yeah. because it's stable, and you get support, and you can count on it. Solid as a rock. Yeah. You know, and it's and you know, they, they make little improvements on it. Yeah, they're not adding a lot of new features. No, no, anymore. no. They're really, it really, it, it's, it's, as, it's as the fully product baked. ages, as yeah. they continue to update it, the engine gets faster. <clears throat> yeah. It uh, it does things very very quickly. Right. The spectrograph in that is as good as anything else for yeah. getting rid of lip smacks. And Absolutely, the pops. spectrograph and audacity has got a long way to yeah. go. I mean, getting rid of mic pops. Not that I ever do mic pops because I use my mic right, but <laughs> occasionally, you know, you might lift up and go, "Oh, Peter Piper picked a peck of pick." You know, and you want to oh. get oh crap, I, yeah, but. But it, it shows up so clearly in a spectrograph as this mm -hmm. big, bright yellow blob with gets darker in the middle. And you just highlight it and you hit auto <laughs> heal a few times and right. gone. And you'll never even know it was there, which is which is nice. And and then you don't have to worry about lots of plugins. I know you love the plugins. 
I never use any plugins. I just, I find that software that has like audition or even twisted wave has basically everything you need to produce proper recording, you know, voiceover. Yeah. If you record properly, as we said, the environment has to be right. Your mic technique has to be right. And you've got to understand how to set levels properly. And that seems, that's another one that people don't get. Mm -hmm. It's like, uh, because as you say, you're you're getting instructions from engineers who currently don't know what they're talking about either. They know what game of telephone, right? Exactly. (laughs) It's oftentimes you're seeing these specs from, you know, casting companies and video game companies and that they don't really understand how would you even get that number to begin with? Right. How would you, how would you measure that? I remember an email thread that you, that you had with, with a producer that was talking about oh, that. Boy. And it was like, well, they said this and they said that. Mm-hmm. And you would not realize it's like, well, this person talked to that person that talked to person that. T- <laughs> and they, and none, and, and only one person at the beginning of the line actually may have know. known what they were talking about. I want to see the family <laughs> tree or the genealogy chart on, <laughs> on how that information made it from, you know, from one end to the other, because, yeah, somebody initi- initiated or originated that spec. Right. Somebody. I don't know who. I'd love to talk to them. Yeah. Call me. Yeah, they're, they're hiding behind a brick wall because they knew you were there. <laughs> uh, Terry Briscoe asks, uh, what's your take on the Sphere L22? How good is it? How good is ability to mimic the mics it claims it can? Well. Really good. Yeah, <laughs> it, it can do it. It's accurate. But here's the thing. Why would you want to keep mimicking all these different mics? It's not going to change the way you read copy. I don't get that yeah. at all. If it's a good mic on its own, yeah. if your environment's right, you set your levels right, and you use it properly, what do you mean? Okay, maybe it sounds like a U87. I don't know an engineer. I don't think even you could tell if Jeff was using a U87 and I was using a U87 that you'd be able to tell, or I was using, say, a Caddy 100. You wouldn't know that. Or even this. The or even the Mojave M5 here. I would probably end up liking the sound of the M850 better than the Neumann U87, I, to be I, honest. I, I like this mic. This is, it, it's, yeah. It's, it's smooth, it's, it's cri- but, and it's still crisp and it's not peaky it doesn't have like a nasalness or honk to right. it or eh. it just it's pleasing right um yeah the l22 is an amazing piece of technology and it's not just the mic it's the software right it's a whole right. system it has a learning curve it has an expense attached to it it's really impractical unless you also have already invested in an apollo um it's harder to to get you know you can use it without the apollo but it, you won't get the same kind of workflow um and yeah, it's it's amazing if you just have absolute un- incurable gas. Yeah, or like you're a you guitarist can, and you're like trying to fit, you know do different things and different effects. Yeah, if but you're that's not voice if over. you're a multi instrumentalist performer and you need to record drums and a guitar and then acoustic guitar and then a cello and then some singing and you don't want to have 12, 15 microphones. It makes a heck of a lot of sense if you're a voice actor and you just you've. Ex- you, you don't know your career is stuck. You don't know what it is. You've tried everything. You've been to the best coaches and you're like, I just got to get a new mic. Okay, go ahead and give it a shot. <laughs> Cause at least then you're not married to one choice. You right. can now try other mics. It's kind of the Tinder of microphones. <laughs> Tinder of microphones. <laughs> you don't have to commit to not anybody that I know from personal and you experience, can, you can but... swipe left and right and, and try them all out until you find <laughs> one you like. And then when you're done, sell it and buy the real thing. I had more fun with my ribbon mics. You know, it was like, well, that's what's, I mean, you can, if you've always wanted to play with ribbon mics, there's ribbon yeah. mics in the sphere and you can play with those too. So exactly. it's great for playing around and it's fun to experiment with. And yes, with the right training and the right tech setting it up for you. Yes, I can help you. It can sound amazing. If you're just playing around with it, it will lead you down many, many rattles of, yeah. of distraction. Yeah. Okay. We got a couple more questions. One's yes. a comment. Okay. I, which, you know, you know, we appreciate your comments, but it's our show. We get to make all the comments. <laughs> uh, and one is about AI and John Bailey was talking about that last week. <clears throat> and yeah, it came up when John Bailey was talking about it. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, we didn't get to Terry's comment. Uh, gotcha. Right. Okay, so uh, last one. Uh, what do you think of the MK600? I haven't used it. Uh, using the the AA battery 
for on the go recording with its high pass filter that's on a, I've, I've never, I'm not familiar. It's a noisy, it's a noisy, it's a noisier Noin. MKH 460. <laughs> That's the MKH 600 is fine. It's noisier. Yeah. Like it's just got more noise. Okay. It's hissier. Um, yeah. Bait bottom line. Um, Tara, I know you want to get your comment out. AI won't be able to replace character acting, but it is a real problem for VO genres like corporate narration and IVR. Yeah. You're probably, you're probably right. Right. Well, we, we don't know. We just don't know. I, yet. I, when it comes to AI, I think it's a whole other discussion that, you know, maybe we need to bring all these somebody. conferences are going to have round tables about AI. We, we have a webinar coming up <laughs> with uh, world voices uh -huh. with, uh, with a bunch of different uh, experts on it. People who mm -hmm. are licensing voices, people who are using it, you know, and, and that's going to, I think it's on the 23rd. So join world voices and then you can listen to that webinar and, yeah. and, and figure that one out. But I, we're going to hear a lot about that at, at voiceover Atlanta. For sure. For sure. Know, which, which you and I will both be at. And very quickly, just to put Rob Williams's question to bed, you're using a 15 year old version of Adobe audition. That's oh. not supported. <laughs> what do you want? What do you want? <laughs> what do you want for nothing? Exactly. Um, All right. Sorry. <laughs> well, that's going to do it for <laughs> your questions and for Tech Talk. And we're going to take a quick break right now, and then we'll wrap it up right after these messages. Yeah. Hi, this is Carlos Alas Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching Voice Over Body Shop. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. There's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products, and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. VoiceOver Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources, and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions, bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, home studio setup, and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do, then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, VoiceActorWebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. We are the World Voices Organization, also, also known, known as WOVO. We're the not-for-profit industry association of freelance voice talent. VoiceOver is a complex entrepreneurial business. WOVO is there to promote the professional nature of voice work to the public, to those already established in their voiceover practice, and to those who want to pursue voiceover as a career. Membership benefits include a supportive and creative community, community. a profile and demos on voiceover.biz, our searchable directory of vetted professional voice talent, our exclusive demo player for your personal website. Our mentoring program, business resources, and our video library. Our annual WovoCon conference, a fun and educational weekend with other members with the a chance, chance to learn and, and network. network. Webinars and great speakers and weekly social chats with other members around the world. If your world is voiceover, make Wovo part of it. World Voices Organization. We, we speak, speak for those who speak, speak for a living. living. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching Voice Over Body Shop. It's great. Are, are we on? I think we're on. She didn't point to we're us, on. so how are we supposed to know? 
I mean, she's a good director, but you know, you got to go like this and then, okay. Especially if you're not looking at everything uh, <laughs> next week on this very show, I know we have a great guest coming up. I'm not going to say that person's name because eventually they're going to write back to me. There's two people actually that I, the waiting I'm working for them to reveal themselves. The, that's right. You know, I like, talked to them on Facebook, take the, you know, send them an email. They, they said they wanted to do the so show. Many great guests to be had. I we know. just have to be persistent right. and patient. Yeah. But speaking of great things, there are yeah. people who donate to our show to help Darn us straight. to fray the cost of doing this perfectly every mm-hmm. week. Like we do. Uh, let's see here. Robert Leadham. Oh, yes. Thank you, Robert. The Bristol Group. Uh, Stephen Chandler. Casey Clack. Jonathan Grant. Thomas Pinto. Shelley Avellino. Greg Red. Thomas. Uh, Dr. Voice. Hateland Productions. Martha Kahn. 949 Designs. Christopher Epperson. Sarah Borges. Philip Sapir. Brian Page. Patty Gibbons. Rob Ryder. Shauna Pentington Baird. Don Griffith. Trey Mosley. Diana Birdsall. And Sandra, Sandra Manwiller. All righty. Uh, hey. HomeVoiceOverStudio.com if you want to talk to me about getting your home voiceover studio right uh, or you have no idea what you're doing and you're like, what equipment do I buy? Go over there. For the advanced stuff. Well, advanced stuff, but also I'm actually going to VO Atlanta. I'm actually a, a speaker. Yeah, I'm paying to be a sponsor so I can be at VO Atlanta. Yeah, And I'm doing an X session. So help me offset the cost of attending VO Atlanta, would you? Maybe showing up <laughs> can i you hang can, out in your session <laughs> yeah so the x session i think there's 12 seats yeah I, last time i checked i think i had eight remaining so mm. there's plenty of seats it's 199 bucks and it's three hours of me talking about mic to mp3 it's really sort of just everything you need to know to get great audio <sighs> and get it quick like get y'all don't have time to mess around so it's like how do you get efficient great sounding audio to your clients with the least amount of fuss and all that stuff. So that's what Mike to MP3 is about. So if you're going to view Atlanta, check out my X session, please. I'd love to see you there. It's on Thursday. Um, so anyway, that's, that's what I'm plugging. And by the, by the time you see the show, we're still offering the GTT two number two point P O I N T O O H coupon code for 20% off. That's good till the end of March at the new George the dot tech. Excellent. We need to thank our wonderful sponsors because mm-hmm. they have been incredibly loyal. Like Harlan yeah. Hogan's voiceover essentials, voiceover extra source elements, VO heroes.com voice That's which right. Which is a new product from voice actor websites, which, which we've is, both used. It's a, it's a templated system for creating your voiceover studio or your voiceover website Acting website yeah super duper fa- 10 minutes you can have your a voiceover website mm-hmm. perfectly templated you don't have to overthink it so we appreciate that and worldvoices.org the industry association of freelance voice talent wovocon is coming up may 5th through the 7th in orlando you got to be a member to go so join up and join us in orlando it's going to be a great time different type of conference not it's not no, no hype, no selling. It's just members helping members. So right. that's going to be great. Mm-hmm. Anyway, thanks to Jeff Holman for doing a killer job tonight uh, yes, on the sir. couch over here, just getting us all those questions. Mm-hmm. And Sue Merlino for, you know, getting it done, even with the, her, her with the mouse going. The gimpy down. mouse. Yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> with. Out, and thanks for wearing the Hokies colors sweatshirt tonight. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Yeah. Go Hokies. Yes. And Lee Penny, because... He's Lee Penny. All righty. That's going to do it for us this week. We're here to help you with your home voiceover studio because your audio is really, really important. The thing is, is if it's right, it's right. And if it's bad, it's usually something that is wrong. That's going to prevent you from getting the job. Not if it's right. So if it sounds good, it is good. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Woodham. And this is voiceover. Body shop. Or VO. B.S. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Have a great week, everybody. Later, everybody. Later, everybody.